God wants to do great things through our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants to do big things. It's just that when he wants to do big things, he wants to use our our faith. He was he wants to work with us. You know, when God wants to do these big things, He doesn't want to do these big things alone. He wants to do these big things together with us. Hallelujah. Amen. What we have to know is that um, as a child of the living God, as a Christian, we are the agent of light. We are the agent of light. Hallelujah. Amen. We are the agent of light God want to agree with me and with you in order to do big things in the in this world in our countries and all over the world Amen. hallelujah Amen. God want to use us then we need to avail ourselves as one of the things that enables God to do these things and to work through us. It's our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. It's our faith. No wonder the Bible says that in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6. The Bible says that it is impossible to please God without faith. Those who come to him must believe that is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That means anybody who come to God must believe that God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And when we avail ourselves by faith, we give God a platform in order to do big things in our lives when we agree with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Then availing ourselves in prayer, availing ourselves in the word of God, availing ourselves when we spend time in the presence of God is very, very much important. So that when God want, want to use us, he can use us to do great and wonderful things in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then God want to do big things. God want to do marvelous things. It's just that he wants somebody to agree with. For example... By the time of Joseph, God used Joseph in order to do great and wonderful things in Egypt, not only in Egypt and also in his family, in the, his family in Israel. God used Joseph. That means Joseph had to avail himself. Joseph need to avail himself that he can agree with God and God can use him in order to save Egypt and in order to save his family. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, when God, by the time of Elijah, Elijah had to avail himself. And God could use Elijah when Elijah availed himself and agree with God. And God was able to do great and wonderful things in Israel because of Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. But these are our days. If heaven is looking for anybody to use today, that person is me and you because God is in heaven, the patriarchs are in heaven, other servants of God who have gone before us, they are, where are they? they are in heaven. He can't choose them here on earth, 
but he can use you and me when we avail ourselves unto God in this world because where are we? We are still in this world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Meaning that there are things that God wants to do in your country. There are things that God wants to do in your family. But he wants somebody to agree with him. He wants somebody who is availing, availing himself or herself so that he can use that person into, in order to do great and mighty works in our days. But the secret is this one. We must avail ourselves unto God. We must avail ourselves. Giving him time. Spending our time in his presence. And eventually, God will use me and you to do great things. Amen. Do you know that God depends on you? He depend on you. He depend on us. Amen. He depend on us. Amen. He depends on our prayers. Our Amen. prayers before God, they are very, very much important. Don't Amen. never underestimate your prayers. Our prayers, they are weapons. They are articles that God can use in our days. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why as a Christian you must pray. Why must you pray as a Christian? One of the reasons why you must pray is because God is also dependent in our prayers today. If we don't decree, if we don't declare, if we don't pray, God cannot do anything because he will be waiting for somebody to pray. There are some things that you need to decree as a child of God. You need to pray as a child of God and God will begin to do them. Hallelujah. Amen. That means there are something that we have to pray about. There are something that we must begin to say. In order for God to do in your family, in order for God to do in your country, in order for God to do in your business, in order for God to do wherever you go, in your working place, God sometimes is only waiting for somebody who can agree with him, who can invite him unto action. That's what the Bible says that in the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Mandala bazonda rabazonde le bazonde. Raki bazonta la bayandoj. Kalabahazadi. Chapter 7 verse number 14. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. The Bible says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. If my people, who are my people? My people is talking about you and me who is a believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who, me and you who is a believer. We are the people of the Lord. We are the children of God. We have to humble ourselves and we seek his face. As we pray, the Lord is going to heal hear our prayers. And the Lord is about to heal our land. Our land, he, our land, it may be your country. Our land, it may be your family. Our land may be your family. Our land may be your finances. When we do what? When we humble ourselves. And we pray. When we know that by ourselves we cannot do anything. We need him 
in our everything and west west we know and we acknowledge that we need him what are we going to do we're going to begin to pray and when we begin to pray what is the lord going to do he's going to answer prayer he's going to change our situations hallelujah because there are some situations that will never change unless we pray. Some of the things that are just only looking for prayers. Then we must humble ourselves and we must seek his face. As we pray, the Lord will hear our prayers. The Lord will change that situation. Some of the things are only looking for prayers. They are only looking for men and women of God to humble themselves and pray when we avail ourselves in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. When we humble ourselves in prayer, we're going to begin to see the mighty hand of God fighting for us, healing us, defending us, doing what no man can ever do. That's what the Bible says that in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59. Mandala brosandere bosia talabahanda. The Bible says that verse number verse number one. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. The arm of the Lord is not too short to save. And even his ear is not dull to hear. The ear of the Lord is not dull to hear. He listens when we call. He listens when we pray. But we must avail ourselves in prayer. We must avail ourselves unto the Lord. And uh, we will see the mighty hand of God fighting for us healing us, defending us, according to the power that is working in us. What is the power that is working in us? That is the power of the Holy Spirit and is the power of our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit and the power of our faith. That means we must available we must let faith be available where in us as we constantly feed ourselves in the word of God and in what God is doing so that we may have faith in order that faith when God wants to do something that is out of this world or a miracle we will be available unto God in faith we will be having faith that God will use in order to perform miracles. Because some of the people, they want God to, perform, to, to work on their behalf. But the problem is that they don't have faith. When God comes in order to perform a miracle, they disappoint God when they don't have faith at all. God wants to perform a miracle. Amen. When God wants to perform a miracle, he finds that, ah, the person who wants a miracle does not have faith. You know, it troubles God. The Bible says that one day, Jesus Christ went to his hometown. And the Bible said that that day, the Lord Jesus Christ wanted to perform a miracle. When the Lord Jesus Christ wanted to perform a miracle, when he arrived at his hometown, he was so disappointed by the lack of faith. He was disappointed. The Bible said he could not perform any miracle, even though that he wanted to perform a miracle. But because these people had no faith in them, these people, they were not expecting anything from the Lord. Ah, he could not perform any miracle, even though the anointing to heal was available. And he could just lay hands on the few people who were there. Then you know, because these people, they did not have faith. These people, they don't even have expectation. And it was hard for God to perform a miracle. 
I wonder today to how many people God is appearing. To how many people God is coming to their rescue. And when you arrive where they are in their houses, in their life, he finds out these people, they don't have faith. They don't have faith. They have been feeding themselves with the wrong information. With the wrong information that degraded their faith. Reduces their faith and they are unable to expect and they are unable to receive from God. Then, you know, that's why we create an atmosphere that allows us to be ready unto the Lord. To be ready to receive unto the Lord as we constantly live in the presence of God. As we constantly live in the word of God. As we constantly live on the testimony of what God has done and what God is doing, that when God wants to come and perform a miracle, we are ready and we are available unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are ready. And we are available unto the Lord in order for the Lord to perform a miracle. But sometimes some people are not available. They are not available unto the Lord. They are not ready unto the Lord. When God is even sending the servant, they say, oh, go and perform a miracle. The servant of God goes to perform a miracle and you find that those people, they don't have faith. They don't have faith. They are not expecting anything from the Lord. It's not that God did not want to perform a miracle. It's not that God did not send a servant to go and perform a miracle. He has sent one. And God is ready to perform a miracle. It's just that most of the time he get disappointed. He get disappointed with faithless people. With the people who are not expecting anything unto the Lord. No matter how God is loaded, no matter how God wants to perform a miracle, due to unbelief, he cannot perform a miracle. Then we must make sure that we have got an expectious spirit. Hallelujah. Expectious spirit. A spirit that is expecting God to do something. And you can only have the expectious spirit when you find yourself in the presence of God, feeding yourself. Feeding yourself with the word of God. Feeding yourself with the testimony what God is doing, then you will be ready unto the Lord to perform miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say, O oh God, O oh God, O oh Holy Spirit, O oh Holy Spirit, help me, help me to have faith. Help me. To have a special spirit, to have a spirit. In, order in order to receive, to receive what, God has for me. what God has for me. Let me give you an example. You know, this morning I went to, to the clinic to go and deliver the word of God. In order to pray for those who God wa I want them God, God wanted to bless. You know, sometimes when I was preaching there, I could see some of the people they're not expecting anything from God. I was so disappointed because the anointing was too much in order to perform miracles, in order to change somebody's life in a second. And I was like, what? God has sent me here. But there are few people to receive their blessings from the Lord. I was so disappointed because of that. Like today, you know, we are live in some of the platforms. Some of the people, they are seeing this video and they're going like, ah, who is this? Not knowing that God is, is visiting them, is visiting them tonight. Using that video in order to perform miracles in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, will some of the people um, 
blame God that God did not come. No, God has come using this video tonight. God has come and sent his FPS 7 tonight. But it will only depend. Is there somebody who is ready in order to receive what God has for them? Hallelujah. Okay, I want to take it further tonight to the scriptures that were, that we read. We have sent out. I will read Matthew chapter 6 verse number 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You know, when you are praying unto God, you know, also you, you must forgive other people. The Bible said that do unto others that you want them to do unto you. Also, if you want God to forgive your sins, it's your duty to forgive your fellow brother's sins, your fellow human being's sins. And when you do that, God Almighty also will forgive all of your sins. Hallelujah. Because sins are dangerous. Sins are dangerous in such a way that if somebody has sinned and their sins are not forgiven, when they pray, those sins, they stand before their prayers. And due to their sins, they cannot receive what God has for them unless God has forgiven their sins. And it's only when they repent that God can forgive their sins. Hallelujah. Then when we are available, avail ourselves in order for God to bless us. One of the things we must prepare ourselves and let God forgive all of our sins. And uh, as we do so, the Lord will answer our prayers. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6 verse number 15. If you do not forgive other sins, your father will not forgive your sins. If you do not, it's very clear. If you don't forgive other people's sins, also God will not forgive your sins. Then when you forgive somebody their sins, you are actually releasing yourself. You are opening the way for yourself even unto God to forgive your sins. And as you do so, he will also do what? Bless you. Hallelujah. And also sometimes when you want God to bless you, you must bless your fellow human being. Are you what I'm saying? You want God to bless you. What must you do also? You must bless your fellow human being. As you bless your fellow human being, God will also do what? Will bless you. In the same principle, if you want God to forgive your sin, what must you do? You must forgive other people's sins. Then what will God do? God will also do what? Will also forgive your sins. You want also God to bless you? Financially, you must bless also other people who are in need. As you for bless other people who are in need, what will God do? He will also do what? He will also bless you. It's very, very much important. What you want God to do unto you, do it also unto others. Hallelujah. Amen. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I forgive. I forgive. Everyone. Everyone. Who have sinned against me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Matthew chapter 6 verse number 19 NIV. Do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moth, vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Okay. Here, the word of God is telling us what? First of all, put the kingdom of God first. And your biggest investment as a child of the living God must be the kingdom of heaven. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Your biggest investment must be the work of God, not your bank account. Hey, many people want to invest in the things that are tangible. They want to invest in this life. But the problem is that in the institution of this world, the thief can steal. The moth can eat those things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if you want to invest as a child of the living God, invest in the kingdom of God. Invest in the work of God. Because once ever you invest in the kingdom of God, no thief can steal it. No, no moth can eat it. No vermin can destroy it. Whatever is with God is safe. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you only invest on the physical thing, whatever you have invested is in trouble. Amen. It's at risk. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. But if you invest in the kingdom, whatever you invest in the kingdom is with the Lord. You know, no demon can steal with whatever you have put in the Lord. No witch can destroy with whatever that has, in, has been invested in the Lord. No witch, no demon, no tokolosh. But if you only invest on the bank account, if they said that that bank is falling down, like what happened in our country, in Venda, many people... They invested on this bank called VBS. Ah, the owners, the directors of that bank, they ate money. Then the people who invested on the, uh, that bank, they are in trouble. Their money is eaten. They don't have. They don't have return. I'm telling you, whatever you invest in the kingdom of God, Jesus will not eat your money and finish it. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, God, you will never hear say that uh, heaven is bankrupt. Heaven can never be bankrupt. Heaven can never be bankrupt. Whatever you invested in the Lord is safe. You will even get it beyond this lifetime. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Beyond this lifetime, whatever you have trusted unto the Lord, you will find it. If, if it's your time that you have spent praying, if it's your money that you have spent giving to the work of God, is if anything that you have in, been investing in the kingdom of God, even the time that you pass on this world, it will be waiting for you in the eternity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then don't only invest in the things of this world. I've told you the other day, how the rich people of this world are crying at the end of their life. The rich people of this world, because when, let's say somebody is very rich, their bank account is full of money. Let's say that person is rich. He has got many big, beautiful cars, beautiful houses. It's a painful thing when that person leaves their body, when the body and the spirit separate. They think about the money that they have left in the bank. They think about the houses that they're going to be leaving behind. They think about the, 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 their cars. And they don't want to leave. And their time to go is, is arrive. But I'm telling you, when you have in, invested in the kingdom of God, even the day that you leave this world, it will be a victory. It will be a victory. It will be a victory when you have served God. When you have invested in the kingdom of God. It will be a victory. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You won't be. You will be going like, I can't wait to see what I've been working for. I can't wait to receive my reward where? In heaven. Because you have invested where? In heaven. But if you can only live for the things of this world, the day that you have to leave this world is a problem. Then that's why Jesus Christ was advising us here. Let us not invest. Let us invest. Store yourself treasures. Not here on earth. Where moth, vermin, where thieves can break in and steal. But store for yourself treasures in heaven. Where moth, vermin do not destroy. And where thieves cannot break in and steal. For where your treasure is, 
there it will be your heart be also. Let me tell you this. Do you want to love Jesus? Do you want to love the work of God? Do you want to enjoy the things of God? Invest into the work of God. For where your heart, where your treasure is, there is also your heart. Are you hear what I'm saying? That means if you invested into the things of this world, what will happen? Your heart will be into the things of the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if you can invest into the kingdom of God, into the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will love the things of God. Why? Because your money also will be in the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Your heart will burn for the things of God. Many people, their heart are into the world and into the worldly things. Why? They've invested into the worldly things. They have invested into the worldly things. Then what way must we invest? We must invest into the things of the kingdom. We must invest into the things of God. Then, because of that, your heart also will be in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Matravroja de Vazode. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one or la and love another. You will be destroyed. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both money and God. God and money. Okay. That means if you want to serve God, if you are saving money, the things of money, the things you are trying to build, the worldly empire, your heart will be where? In the things of world. But if you want to serve God, invest in God. And you will be able to serve God and you will be able to please God. Because you cannot please the things of the world and please God at the same time. You will please one. What, are you, what do you want to live for? Do you want to live only for the things of this world? Or do you want to live for God? Invest in God. Invest in God with your time. Invest in God with your resources. Then you will have a deep bond with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I love, God. I love God. I will invest in God. Hallelujah. It's just that some of the people, they are worried too much about the things of this world. That's why he, the Lord gave us the verse like this. Matthew 6 verse number 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Many people, they are serving the world. They are serving mama because they are too worried. What will I eat? What will I wear? What will I drink? They are worried about the things of this world. It makes them hard to focus in the things of God because they are too worried. They are too worried. What will I eat? What will I wear? No. Save the Lord. God knows that what you know that you are in need for something to eat. God knows that you are looking for money. God knows that you are looking for something to eat, something to drink. He will give it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. You just have to trust him. And not be entangled with the things of this world. Entangle yourself with the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Entangle yourself with what? With the gospel. Entangle yourself with the things of God. Entangle yourself. Let your heart burn for the gospel. Let your heart burn for the things of, the, of God. Not for the things of the world. As the things of this world are temporal. But the things of God are eternal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Don't worry, I'm saying to you tonight. Don't worry. Don't worry, the Lord wants to take care of you. 
He wants to take care of us. But we must be available unto God. We must care about what God cares about. And what God cares about the most is what? Is the gospel of Jesus Christ. For the gospel of Jesus Christ, he died. For the souls of men, he died. Then tonight, we are about to pray. As we pray, I'm here to tell you that God is about to take care of you. I'm here to tell you that God is about to answer your prayers. Tonight, and as you are praying tonight, let your heart burn for what God burns about. Wherever you are, begin to pray. Mandara brojandara basundara bayade. Mandoro bozunduru boyandala basundara bayade. Mandara bayandoro boziandara bayade. Mandara bayandoro bozunduru boyade. Mayando robo sundara bayande le bozodo. Mayere re re ando robo sundara bayande. Mandara bayando robo sundara bayande. Shire re re bozodo robo yandara ba.
Hallelujah.